Hi everyone, welcome to the series of problem solving through C programming. I am Varun and today we would like to discuss some basics of computer programming. Let's initially discuss the title of our course and try to get something out of it. As our title is problem solving through C programming, to make it very general, we can say problem solving through programming. So from title, we can have question that we are iterating the statement problem solving, but what sort of problems can be solved using programming? Do we solve every problem, every real life problem through programming? The answer is no. Now the question is why? Please note, if we know that, what are the steps that we must execute or perform in an order to arrive at the desired result or solution for a real life problem, then yes, we can solve it by programming. So the answer no is justified for the asked question. As it cannot solve the problem of deforestation, overpopulation, pollution and many more. So we we'll conclude that solving problems didn't mean every problem but only some of the problems that are emerging in our day to day life. Let's have an example. Suppose, we would like to find the average of given four force magnet. Ask yourself a question, can this problem be solved by programming? As we know the steps to be followed for solving this, this problem that are get the magnitude of force, first force, get the magnitude of second force, get the magnitude of third force, get magnitude of fourth force. Add the magnitude of forces, F1 plus F2 plus F3 plus F4 is equal to sum. Divide sum by number of forces magnitude, then announce the result. As these steps are very clear, so yes, we can solve it by programming. Now, let's come on. What is programming? Programming is informing computer as how to solve a particular problem. Informing computer means instructing the computer. How to solve a pro particular problem means steps to be followed. Or, programming is the process of writing a program. From both the statements, we can easily define the program. A program is the list of instructions where each statement tells the computer to do the desired task. So, till now, from entire discussion, we get that before writing a program to solve a particular problem, it is essential to have a thorough understanding of the problem. Suppose, if you are asked by your teacher to solve an arithmetic problem and you are not familiar with the steps involved in solving that problem, in such a situation, you will not be able to solve that problem. Similarly, a programmer cannot write the instructions to be followed by a computer or you can also say the program unless the programmer knows how to solve the problem manually. Now, let's add another basic terminology in our session that is algorithm. Algorithm is defined as the sequence of steps to be followed to solve a particular problem. Sometimes we have to express an algorithm for reader's understanding and it is also a good practice for future documentation and developing a program free from logical error. Now the question is, how do we express an algorithm? There are many different ways of expressing an algorithm. We have two distinct ways to express an algorithm that are flowchart, which is, it is the diagrammatic representation of sequence of steps. Next is the pseudocode. It is the English-like language to express the sequence of steps. As flowchart is the diagrammatic representation of sequence of steps, there are some fundamental elements in flowchart. Circle is used for start and stop of program. Oblong shape is used for input from the user and output given by the display. Then decision block is used for some condition statements that are further discussed in the course. Then rectangle is used for the computation box. Let's again have an example of find the average of given force, given four force magnitudes. Then the 
diagrammatic representation that there is a flow chart the steps are shown like this as we have shown the fundamental elements of flow chart you can start within the circle and then there are oblongs where we are getting the input of the forces then using rectangle we are showing the computation of the computation of sum of all the forces and then again the rectangle that is the computation of average then again the oblong which are printing the average or which are resulting the average then within the circle we show the stop in that manner the sequence of steps are shown in the flow chart and for the same problem we are also showing the pseudo code representation the steps are read magnitude of first force read magnitude of second force read magnitude of third force read magnitude of fourth force compute the sum f1 plus f2 plus f3 plus f4 compute average then print average then stop as we just wrote the sequence of steps we recall the definition of programming programming is informing computer as how to solve a particular problem but we know computer is a electronic machine that only understands the pattern of zeros and ones or you can say on or off as in the last slide we have wrote some steps that are shown here ask yourself a question are these instructions understood by computer as per the definition mentioned above above about computer no these instructions are not understood by computer directly let's have a look on this let's have a example of a word or a string apple that computer can't understand but human can understand what computers can understand is zeros the pattern of zeros and ones that is a binary which human can easily understand so it's like a situation when we are meeting someone who doesn't understand your language and you can't his or her so for that case you are required a translator similar in the communication of human and computer there is a translation required that translation is done, done with the help of compiler compiler it converts program into machine code or language which is understandable by computer now the question is still there how to write the program or how to write the sequence of steps as the above mentioned are not valid steps to communication the solution is here is the need of an programming language let's have an introduction to programming languages in an aim of successful communication between an individual and a computer there are two basic types of languages used in computer that is low level and high level languages initially we are come up, coming upon low level languages which are further subdivided into two languages that is machine language and another is assembly language as it is difficult for everyone to write a code in machine language so there is an evolution of assembly language and also known as the second generation of languages these languages enable instructions to be written using symbolic codes rather than in strings of zeros and one it is also a machine dependent language program written assembly language can be used on that particular computer for which it is written we cannot use it on other type of computer therefore program written in assembly language are not portable now the next category is high level languages programming languages that are machine independent are high level language high level languages can be used with a number of different hardware makes with little or no modifications these languages are easier to learn than symbolic languages example fortran basic pascal c c++ java python and many more all of which have certain set of rules and draw on symbols and conventions from english instructions written in these languages are statements rather than 
mnemonics. The other advantages are as they require less time to write. These are easier to maintain. High level languages provide better documentation. Program written in such language can be executed in any computer. So, learning any of the high level languages would open the path for development of program. Now, why it is necessary for learning language? Because it is required to know the valid keywords in that language and correct syntax. Now, let's have a look for the steps involved in development of a successful program. The program development process includes following three stages that is program design, program coding and program testing which further includes some of the further phases. Program design is concerned with the development of a strategy to be used in writing the program in order to achieve the solution of a problem. The program design involves the following four stages, problem analysis, outlining the program structure, algorithm development, selection of control structures. Next is the program coding. The algorithm developed in the previous step must be translated into a set of instructions that a computer can understand. The major emphasis in coding should be simplicity and clarity. The elements of coding style include internal documentation, construction of statements, generality of this program, input or output formats. Next is the program testing. Testing and debugging refers to the task of detecting and removing errors in a program so that the program produces the desired results. The various types of errors are syntax error, runtime errors and logical errors and there are many more other errors. Next is the overall flow of the program execution and how program executes in a computer. First is the algorithm, then it is converted into the high level language or you can also say the program. Then there is a compiler which converts it into the machine level language and then that machine level language stored in a memory. Then memory from memory execution in the processing unit then that shows the result. That is the end of the session. Today we discuss some basic terminologies which are helpful while learning and understanding any programming language. Thank you for watching. For more videos, do subscribe my channel, Mackie Insight.